10,610,412. That's how many levels are in Mario Maker 1. That's a lot of levels, and Team 0% made it their goal to beat every single one of them. The drive to complete this monumental undertaking had its ebbs and flows, but on October 4th of 2023, Nintendo announced they would be shutting down the Mario Maker 1 servers on April 8th of 2024. At the time of this announcement, there were just under 26,000 levels left to be completed, and players that hadn't been active in years came out of retirement to contribute to Team 0%, which brings us to the current day. With only a few days left before the servers went offline, there remained only one level between the team and 0% being achieved, but it is difficult. Actually, that's an understatement. It's the most difficult level ever created in Mario Maker. But before we look at it, it's important to understand how we got here and what makes a particular level difficult, so let's start with an overview of Mario Maker. There are four different styles you can make a level in, Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 3, New Super Mario Bros, and Super Mario World. Each of these games offer unique mechanics, with SMB being the simplest of the four, but creative level makers have found other ways to add difficulty than using different mechanics. SMB is the only game where Mario can't pick up items, so the levels mostly revolve around jumping and momentum control. This might sound easy if you're picturing Mario only jumping over pits and enemies, but in difficult levels, it's not that simple. In addition to open pits, your movement is limited by hazards, which shifts the requirement from simply making a jump to completing it in a very specific way. A great example of this is nudging Mario over a hazard so that he can gather enough speed to make a jump because a platform on its own doesn't provide enough runway. These are known as precision tricks and feature prominently in many courses, but none is more notorious than Beast Needle, the most difficult of the SMB levels. Clocking in at over 6 minutes long, it's a gauntlet of difficult precision jumps and even has some puzzles involving the few objects that Mario can interact with. The falling blocks are a staple, as they have a range of uses, from ensuring that players only get a few attempts at a jump, to being used as a timing mechanic for mid-air sequences. A single mistake takes you back to the start, and it took King Boo around 40 hours and 1,000 attempts to complete it, one of the larger roadblocks on the path to 0%. But this is just one of four game styles, so let's look at Super Mario Bros. 3. SMB3 has similar mechanics, with P-Speed being a big factor in level design, but the biggest difference is the Tanuki suit and being able to pick up items. In this level, Flight of the Massachist, you're required to fly in a tight space, make frequent two-frame inputs, and navigate four different zones while everything tries to kill you. Some levels even require knowledge from outside of the game to solve, like this one by Halgafan, where you need to deduce the proper sorting algorithm to arrange POW boxes correctly. And if you need help understanding how things like this work, this video's sponsor Brilliant can help. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Every lesson has hands-on problem solving that lets you interact with the concepts being taught, a proven method that's over six times more effective than watching videos passively. Rather than have you memorize lines from a textbook, Brilliant explains concepts to you that has you hone those skills by problem solving, helping you become a better thinker by combining the theory with hands-on application. And the best part is, Brilliant doesn't require hours of sitting down each day. You can tailor your education to your schedule so it's convenient for you. If you've been hesitant in learning a programming language, Brilliant offers lessons in Python that takes you from the basic syntax of the language to a foundation of core concepts before showing you how to apply what you've learned towards advanced principles. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash abisoft or clicking the link in the description where you'll also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. And with that, let's get back to Mario Maker. In addition to the correct sorting algorithm being applied to the POW blocks, you also need to use a secret mechanic that keeps them spawned while off screen so the door can be accessed. There's a lot of theory behind this level, and it's more than I can cover here, so check the description after for a video by Riley breaking it down. This brings us to New Super Mario Bros, which lays claim to a whopping 80% of uploaded levels, and it offers everything, including some of the hardest and most intricate mechanics. There are far too many nuances with NSMB levels to cover in a single video, so instead, let's look at a few difficult levels, and Burning Forest is a great one to start with. The first thing worth noting is the use of Fire Flower Wall Climbing, where you throw a fireball after doing a wall kick as it resets Mario's wall jump state. This lets you twirl back to the wall and repeat the sequence to gain as much height as you want and can even be done while carrying an item. Another trick in this level is the Air Stall, where you use a Ground Pound to send Mario down but cancel it with a twirl to delay your descent. The result is a repeatable 
double move that lets you stay in the air for a very long time. The ground pound has other uses as well, and the level even has some sections where you need to juggle a spring, then ground pound off of it to make a jump, resulting in a level with lots of difficult tricks and a hidden constraint the timer. When Black Dragon completed this level, he had a single second to spare, which means not only do you need to execute the tricks, but you have no time for a second try on anything. And there's an entire brand of levels appropriately called speedruns that use the timer as their gimmick. Just because a level is a speedrun doesn't mean it's short. Sometimes, long levels are designed with a strict time requirement, and Chocolate Speedrun Emperor is one of the most difficult. With a time limit of 3 minutes and 40 seconds, a well-executed run will have you finish with only a handful of seconds if you're moving at the fastest pace possible. It requires just about every piece of movement tech in the game, and even has small puzzles that need to be solved along the way, with these red coins being a necessary pickup as the key to the final door only spawns once you've grabbed all eight. Chocolate Speedrun Emperor would fall on February 18th of this year to No No No, a Japanese runner who's cleared lots of levels for Team 0%. But on the other end of the spectrum exist speedrun levels that are very short and require perfection in execution. Ueda is one such level, and while it may seem innocent and easy, under the surface, things are completely different. Almost every movement requires frame-perfect execution, and the water section in particular is worth looking at. Pressing a single button to move up may sound easy, but the pipes were spaced at such a distance that you need to perfectly mash the sequence to perform it optimally, and with only frames to spare, there's no room for error. Fly, the player that cleared this level, puts a rubber band on his joystick so that it points up for the water section. As this frees up his left hand to do a special mash technique which ensures he hits a perfect mash to save every possible frame. And with this level complete, we are now ready for the last game mode, Super Mario World. You can make an argument that Mario Maker itself only exists because of Kaizo ROM hacks for SMW showcasing how popular user-generated content can be for players, so it should be no surprise that Kaizo mechanics feature prominently, with the shell jump being a staple. In addition to having more shells than an 8th place Mario Kart player, Fierce Shellstorm also has puzzle elements that require throwing shells off screen with specific momentum so you can bounce off them later. This is considered the hardest shell level in Mario Maker, and it took Dante Power a solid 35 hours of attempts to beat, achieving the clear in February and bringing the level count to 714 remaining. This left a month and a half for Team 0% to clear the remaining courses, and standing in their way was a collection of levels that were incredibly difficult. But the one I want to focus on is hard for a reason we haven't covered yet as it's incredibly simple. I give you the hardest muncher stairs. The bane of any Kaizo player is the dreaded water level, and this one certainly has levels as it contains several staircases that all require the same repetitive inputs, forcing you to press the swim button over and over again while the munchers eagerly wait for a single mistake. These types of levels are absolutely nuts, but some players have the skill and patience to endure them, and on March 11th, just 11 minutes before midnight, Cap would pull off the unthinkable and cleared the hardest muncher stairs, which left 17 levels between the team and their goal. With the end of Mario Maker fast approaching, March 8th would be a huge day for the team, as the total number of remaining levels would hit 100. And over the course of the day, 31 more levels would get cleared, meaning the same day that there were 100 levels left was also the same day that 69 levels were left. At this point, levels were falling like flies, with the trend chart based on the clear rate predicting that the challenge would end on the 14th of March, almost a full month ahead of the servers going offline. Looking at some statistics, we see that 12 players have cleared over 1,000 levels each, with Schwa's almost reaching 5,000, and as March moved on, the predicted date of completion came and went. It wasn't for lack of trying, in fact from March 8th to the 15th, 99 levels would be cleared, with only one standing in their way trimming the herbs. At the time of this video being posted, the level still hasn't been cleared. In fact, it's so difficult that it may not get cleared. The level you see on screen has unique difficulty, and it also has significant lore, with some players suspecting that the creator used hacks to clear it so that it could be uploaded to the servers, which means it's finally time to dive into the most difficult level in all of Mario Maker. In the seven years since it was uploaded, trimming the herbs hasn't been cleared by a single person, 
It hasn't been grinded the entire time, and a serious effort wasn't put in until only 10 levels remained. So what makes it so difficult? The level is divided into two parts, the descent, where you jump the first three herbs, and then the climb, where you need to collect red coins and perform off-screen interactions. On the surface, this may not look difficult, but a breakdown of the mechanics will reveal that there's more than meets the eye. The descent has three spin jumps you need to hit, but in addition to the jumps, you also need to perform a bomb drop on each flower. To execute one, you need to drop drop the bomb, have it destroy an object or enemy, then regrab it, which sounds simple enough, but these bomb drops are unique. Due to the surrounding hazards, you only have a single frame for each bomb drop. If you're a frame early, Mario will land on the bomb which kills the trick. And if you're a frame late, the bomb won't kill the flower. And this is the easy part, as the real difficulty comes from precise momentum control. Because the saws are so close to the plants, you're very limited in space where you can safely make contact while spin jumping. And if you hit the bomb drop, you need to make use of a very uncommon mechanic to get to the next plant. In Mario Maker, if you press and hold jump, Mario will get a max height jump. But if you press and release jump, then press it again before reaching the apex, it results in Mario falling slower, which allows for precise momentum control. This is rarely used in levels, but it's required here as you need to do a one frame left press after jumping off the first flower so you don't move too far to the right and hit the saw, but that's not all. You need to be far enough left so that you can press right for one to two frames to do another controlled momentum jump that will safely carry you to the next flower. This leaves the last trick of the section, the bomb bonk to the right, which is the hardest trick of the entire level. The direction the bomb bonks is dependent on the direction you're holding on the D-pad when Mario starts the jump, so changing the D-pad direction in mid-air won't alter the direction the bomb will go when performing the trick. To illustrate this, here's the beast bouncing between boos. Boos will get scared of you if you're looking in their direction, and as you can see, if he changes his direction mid-air, the boo he's facing won't get scared until he makes contact with the object he's bouncing on. For the final flower, this means you'll need to land on the left side, carry the momentum right while tapping left to avoid the saw, do a one frame right press before touching the plant to bonk the bomb right, then jump off the bomb. This is likely the hardest sequence of events ever constructed in Mario Maker, and it's only the first half of the level. The second half has plenty of frame-perfect inputs, as you need to bonk the bombs to collect coins before doing an off-screen jump and clearing the final three flowers. Or, to put it bluntly, the hardest 11 seconds in Mario Maker ever. To upload a level you've created, you need to beat it, and this amount of precision had plenty of players thinking the level was uploaded by using TAS. But if we look at the creator's history with the game, we might be able to shed some light on that claim. Ahoyo created Trimming the Herbs in 2017 and uploaded it on August 20th. And a month before the upload, we see he was explaining the first section of the level and said this. Long story short, this is doable. I know this is doable. I've gotten to like here. It's pretty ugly though but I want to make this trick a reality. This establishes that a month before the upload, he was having trouble getting through the flower section, which raises the question, how did he clear it in only four weeks? If we look at another of Ohio's levels, we might get some answers to this. Bombs 5 is a level that Ohio created in June of 2016 that was full of bomb tricks, a mechanic that he pioneered in Mario Maker. While he wasn't known as a Mario Maker player that was good at other techniques, he was virtually unrivaled when it came to bomb mechanics. Bombs 5 was exceptionally difficult, however, and to try and upload it, he streamed for 6 hours a day, 6 days a week for over a year, before hand and tendon issues caught up to him and forced him to stop. The level wouldn't get uploaded until after Nintendo announced they would be ending the feature to upload levels on March 31st of 2021, as Ahoyo returned and completed it before the deadline, which does raise some questions. Did he secretly clear the level and sit on the upload for years, or did he clear it recently, or was it uploaded using TAS? There isn't a clear answer for Bombs 5, but given his long streaming sessions, it was safe to say he was competent with bomb mechanics, so that should clear up any issues with his trimming the herbs upload, right? Not exactly, as some players have pointed out, the bomb drops aren't the difficult part of TTH, the momentum control is, and Ahoyo isn't experienced with that mechanic. This wasn't the only thing that bothered players, however. It was pointed out that the skill of the community in 2017 was significantly lower than it is in the current day. And during the month that Ahoyo was supposedly grinding TTH, not only was he streaming Bombs 5, he was also organizing his own level creation contest, drastically limiting his time to play offline. Given all these questions, speculation was growing rapidly, with one camp claiming the level clear was legit, and the other believing it was up uploaded illegitimately. And since Ahoyo hadn't been active in years, someone spoke to one of his friends who said they witnessed him grinding the level in person 
but with no word from Ohio, the only thing that resulted was more questions. Around this time, Riley uploaded a video pointing out more discrepancies. If you look at Ohio's clear video of Bombs 5 versus the level on the servers, you can see that the clear video has a muncher above the saw, but the level on the servers has a spike, which means the clear video Ohio uploaded is not the clear check for the actual level. This means he would have had to clear the level twice, which seems impossible given how much he was grinding for a single clear. When it comes to trimming the herbs, Riley analyzed the video for splices and didn't find any, but the thing he did notice was that the clear video's loading times matched the first load of a level to the frame, implying it was done on the first attempt. This does seem strange, and Riley does concede that it's possible Ohio trimmed the clips that way coincidentally, but if you believe the level was uploaded illegitimately, there was still one giant question you had to answer. How did he do it? In 2017, the software for tool-assisted speedruns didn't exist for the Wii U aside from a tool that was specific to Twilight Princess, as the Wii U was a difficult system to create tasks for due to technical reasons that caused desyncs. So how did Ahoyo supposedly fake an upload? Emulators for the Wii U did exist, and Riley points out that Ahoyo had a program called AutoHotKey on his PC which lets you program macros. This means he could have used the emulator in combination with AutoHotKey to create a series of inputs that completed the level. but. This method still leaves the problem of getting the task on an actual Wii U. A second theory was that a modded controller was used that can store macros, so the difficult first section would be completed with the macro before you regain control and finish the level normally. Both of these are possible, although as one commenter pointed out, every level upload ever had been done by the player beating it, and Ahoya would have had to create something no one else had been able to achieve, a working task. But. That's precisely what he did. With the deadline approaching for the server shutdown, Ahoyo broke his silence and joined a call with the moderators, some runners, and myself, where he explained everything. He said he created trimming the herbs as a way to reveal that task was possible for the Wii U, and since he developed tendon issues, he thought it would be fitting for the bomb guy to go out with a bang. With its insane difficulty, he thought players would scrutinize the level, at which point he would reveal that task was possible for Wii U, but it was only seen as a very hard level at the time and didn't receive much attention, so his plan backfired and it faded into obscurity. As for Bombs 5, he also cleared that with TAS and didn't upload it until the server shut down because he was on the fence about uploading a second TAS, which also explains the discrepancy between the clear video and the level on the server, as he performed the two clears with TAS after changing the level. As for Team 0%, he knew they would eventually discover the level and chose to reveal everything as he didn't want to rob them of the accomplishment. So. Trimming the herbs was a troll gone wrong, and had he revealed this prior to it being the last level, Team 0% would have got a hype victory. Instead, they spent almost two weeks trying to clear a level that wasn't even legit and were robbed of a celebrated moment since they were told, hey, you've actually already won. So what was the final level? As if the meme gods hadn't played enough tricks on us, the cosmic irony is that the last level was fittingly called The Last Dance, which leaves one burning question that I'm sure is on your mind. How did Ohio TAS? I spoke with some Wii TAS experts ahead of the call with Ohio, and they were confident that an emulation-based task with working gameplay on the Wii U wasn't possible in 2017 due to the technical obstacles. And before he revealed how it was done, I asked if he used an Arduino, and I was right. An Arduino is a device that can be programmed to do a ton of different things, and hooking one up to a Wii U controller was the only thing I could think of that could achieve a gameplay task given the desync issues with the Wii U. So how did Ohio get this idea? During the Bombs 5 grind, someone messaged him about a task they were working on where they soldered a Raspberry Pi to a controller and then fed it inputs from an Excel sheet, but they ultimately abandoned the project. Ahoyo asked his friend if they could do something like this, and they replicated it in two days using an Arduino. And using this device, Ahoyo was able to program inputs directly into the controller to be executed in-game, allowing for a level clear to happen on the Wii U itself. This was the most fascinating tool I'd ever seen for speedrunning and gaming, and had he revealed this at any other time, I bet he would have been celebrated. He did apologize and state that he wasn't going to take away the huge goal from Team 0%, and after speaking with Ohio, he does seem sincerely remorseful for letting it go on so long. But the story doesn't end here. Even though Team 0% is finished, there are some players that are still trying to clear trimming the herbs, so go check out the streamers link below in their quest to beat the only task level in history before the servers go offline, and don't forget to tell them that I sent you. Huge thanks to Fritza for help with this video, and I hope to see you in the next exciting episode of Abisoft Z.